to follow Jesus. I'm resolved to make it to heaven. Why? Because he died for my sins. He paid the price. He did something in my life that the world couldn't give me. But Jesus has given me a new life. We worship you. We magnify you. We glorify the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated tonight. It's good to be in God's house once again, amen, to come and receive something for our souls tonight, amen. This time I'd like to ask our usher to come help us receive the Sunday evening tithe and offering. All Christians do pay tithe and gladly give the offering as unto the Lord. You can give online at myntcc.org slash junctioncityks or on cash app dollar sign ntcc junction city. You give and God will bless you according to your faith and your giving. Brother Ron, sir, would you please pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us the ability to give unto you. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings we have received from you already. We ask you, Lord, to bless the gift and the giver according to your word. In Jesus' precious, powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We do thank you for your giving tonight. And may God bless you according to your giving. Tonight I'd like to direct your attention to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver in him in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. And directing your attention back to verse 9 for a text, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. And with the help of the Lord tonight, I'd like to preach in a thought or title of the message, Trust in the Lord. Pastor, sir, would you please pray? Amen. What do you trust in or count on in your life tonight? When your life hits you hard, when things are happening and you see no way out, who do you call on? Who is, uh, what is the thing that you rely upon uh, when you're going through the situations and you're going through this, uh, the different trials of life and you're facing different obstacles? Uh, who are you relying upon tonight? Uh, are you relying upon the different things that the world has to offer or are you rely upon Jesus Christ tonight? You see, many people, they try to face things on their own. They try to do things within their own strength. They don't trust in the Lord to be their strength, to be their God. They don't trust in God. And here was Paul. He began to share how uh, he was facing so many different things. Uh, and things were coming his way. Uh, and even to the point that they despaired of life. Uh, but he said what? Uh, I'm going to trust in the Lord. Uh, I'm still going to trust in God. Uh, no matter what I might face. Uh, no matter what's coming my way. I'm trusting in the Lord. You see, man's, faith, man's strength, it fails so many times. Many times people are trying to fix their own problems with the worldly solution. You think about the woman with the issue of blood, who had spent all that she had on doctors, 
but rather grew worse. In Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 26. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things and many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Here's an example of someone... At this time, uh, facing a, a no doubt seemingly like a, a life situation, uh, and yet she would try to fix everything. She went to the doctors. Uh, she went to every single person, spending everything she had, uh, but it never worked out in her favor. She went expecting a cure, hoping maybe these men of great knowledge, doctors, uh, these great physicians could, could do something in her life. But everything she seemed to put her hand to, everything she tried to do, oh, you can go try this, uh, uh, Elma, you can try this cure, try this uh, uh, solution, uh, uh, take this so many times a day, uh, do this and do that. Uh, and how many times did she pay attention to that? Uh, and how many times uh, did it only seem to get worse in her life? So how many times do we try to find a worldly fix? Well, if I just get this uh, fixed first, if I uh, put this together first, uh, if I get my life situation now, you know, I understand that God wants me to, to follow him. I understand that, that God wants me to give his, my life to him. But you know, preacher, I got to get this fixed. Uh, I got to do this first. I got to do that. No, we need to do it God's way first. We need to let God fix the problem. Stop trying to fix your own problems and allow Jesus to fix your problem tonight. See, the world can't satisfy the longing heart. Can't satisfy, cannot fulfill, cannot feel the emptiness on the inside that so many feel. People try all kinds of things that would bring them happiness. Oh, if I get a family, I'll be happy. Oh, if I get a, this nice car, I'll be happy. I get this, uh, this house, or if I get the, the wonderful job that pays $100,000 a year, uh, surely I'll be happy. Surely it will bring me some happiness, some joy. And perhaps it does for just a little moment, uh, but all they find in the end is uh, a loneliness and hollowness. Uh, all they find in the end is it truly doesn't bring any satisfaction, uh, but Jesus Christ uh, brings satisfaction. Jesus Christ uh, brings hope. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, brings a relationship, a friendship with you every step of the way. It's like trying to fill a vessel with something that doesn't belong or fit in. This is kind of an out there uh, illustration, but imagine trying to put a piece of meatloaf in a glass of water. It ain't going to fit. You might be able to stuff it in. You might be able to plunge it in there all you want, but it surely is not going to look appetizing. It ain't going to look good. And yet, how are you going to get it out? You're going to take a spoon and try to, to scoop it out? No, you put it, well, how do you do it? You put it on the right size pan. You put it in a plate. You put it in the right vessel. And when you have it in the right vessel, uh, everything, uh, it works out. And so we try to fit the world inside our heart. Uh, we try to put all these different things inside of us, uh, thinking, oh, it's going to bring some satisfaction. But all we find is that it just doesn't fit. It just doesn't bring any true satisfaction. We need to get Jesus on the inside tonight. See, man tries to build his life using his own wisdom, his own intelligence. What we think and believe, it doesn't matter if it isn't based on Jesus tonight. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 26 through 27, Jesus gave this illustration. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. People try to say, well, I believe this. I think about this, you know, uh, uh, 
I have my own views. I have my own way of thinking. Jesus said, if you don't do it the way Jesus taught, if you don't heed his sayings, if you don't heed the word of God, you're like this foolish man who built his house upon the sand, and the winds of life are going to come, and you'll think, oh, I know everything. I have all the knowledge. I went to college. I got this degree. I got that degree. But let me tell you, it isn't going to matter when those winds of life come. Your house, your life is going to be destroyed but if you heed Jesus if you just listen to him and do what God wants you to do your life will stand but people try to do things their own way you can't go to heaven using your own wisdom and the intelligence you can't go to heaven doing things your own way you got to do it the way Jesus said to do it John chapter 14 and verse 6 Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It ain't through Buddha. It ain't through Allah. It ain't through anybody else. It's only through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only way you're going to get to heaven tonight. Amen. The only one. We have to build our life upon the rock. That rock, Christ Jesus. And so we see that man's strength doesn't fails us but God's strength prevails you see tonight God is able to deliver us from whatever situation we're facing he's able to deliver men and women from sin tonight when we look to Jesus for help he will help us to overcome the things that come out our way in Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 through 2 he said wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. What was he telling us? If you want to lay aside that sin, you got to look to Jesus. You got to get your eyes on Jesus because Jesus is the one who died on that cross. Jesus is the one who went to hell in our place. Jesus is the one who loved you so much he took your place. He said what? Come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. You got to come to Jesus. You got to look to Jesus tonight for your salvation. You see Jesus is the cure for sin. He is our deliverer tonight. In John chapter 12 verse 32 he said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. We, we came to lift up Jesus. We came to tell the world about Jesus. We came to tell men and women that Jesus saves and Jesus can deliver you tonight from your sins. He will take away your sin, God. You never have to worry about it. You don't have to, uh, when you give your sin up to God, when you come to this altar, when you come to a place of repentance and, and you surrender to God, uh, you don't have to worry about that sin coming back knocking on your door. You don't have to worry about that sin uh, showing up out of a sin. No, God deliver me. God has changed my life. He said in Psalms 103 verse 12, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west, as far as it goes, uh, uh, God has removed it. Uh, I don't have to worry about coming back. I don't have to worry about falling into the, the trap of sin any longer. I've been delivered. Uh, I've been delivered. I've been changed by the power of Almighty God, uh, whom the Son sets free. What? It's free indeed. Uh, I don't have to worry about those chains coming back on me, but I'm a child of Almighty God. Uh, I'm a new creature in Christ. Uh, my old things are passed away. What? He said, behold, I'll things have become new. I don't have to worry about going back, but I'm a new person. I have a new way of thinking. I have a new way of talking. I have a new way of walking. I have a new life ahead of me, and my end is heaven. Amen. See, God's strength it looks beyond all the circumstances that we throw up, beyond all the excuses. We find excuses for so many things. We find excuses for this and for that. Why we can't live right. We got God's strength that looks beyond it. It gives us the ability to live for Him every day. 
Jesus, he brings peace to the midst of the storm. In Mark chapter 4, verses 38 to 39. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Here were the disciples, they're in the midst of the storm, and, and Jesus is sleeping in the bottom of the, the hinder part of the ship, the, uh, the bottom part of the ship, and he's sleeping uh, soundly. And they see the storm coming upon them. And they see all these things happening. The wind's blowing, perhaps the, the waves crashing into the ship. And they begin to fear. They begin to fear and they begin to wonder, uh, Master, you, you were able to do so many different miracles. Do you not care about us? And he said, please rose up and rebuked. And he said, what? Peace be still. Beyond all the circumstances that was going on around them, beyond the, 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 the wind and the storm and how uh, frightful it might have been, uh, Jesus still had the power, that uh, he has the strength uh, to calm the storm. And, and tonight, when we see the storm around us, uh, when we see things coming our way, when we feel like there's no way out, uh, why don't we look to Jesus uh, and allow Jesus to calm the storms in our life, uh, allow Jesus uh, to bring the peace uh, that passes all understanding, uh, allow God to do something in our life. Because he has the strength. He has the power. He said, well, I have all power given to me in heaven and in earth. Jesus has the power tonight to, to change your life. He can give you the peace you were looking for. Because he does care for you tonight. You may feel like, oh, God doesn't care. God doesn't see what I'm going through. But God does care. God cares more about you than you might realize. See, Jesus, he, he's able to pull us up out of our circumstances. When Jesus was coming to the disciples, and he had prayed in the mountain, and it was the, seemingly the middle of the night, and he's walking on the water, and the, and the storm, there was a storm out there on the water. And they thought it was a ghost or a spirit. And Peter, when he realized that it was the Lord, he said, bid me to come on the water. And Peter wanted to walk on that water, and he did, until he got his eyes on the storm. Until he saw what was going on around it. And when Peter fell, when things seemed to go wrong, Jesus caught him by the arm and they pulled him up and they walked back to the boats. You see, it wasn't Peter's strength, but it was Jesus. And so it's the same way in our life. When we seemingly feel like we're drowning in the midst of life, or we're drowning in the midst of our struggles and our problems, why don't we look to Jesus and allow Jesus to pull us up? And Jesus is able to pull us up out of the miry clay, set our feet on a rock to stay. He's able to take us all the way to glory. He's able to keep us tonight because his strength prevails. And finally... We realize we can come to that place where we can trust in the Lord. What did Paul say? He said we have the sentence of death in ourselves. That we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raiseth the dead. Tonight we can trust in the Lord who raised Christ from the dead. He raised Christ uh, when the enemy thought he had uh, the power. When the enemy thought that uh, Satan had the, thought he had won, won the war. When Satan thought he had he destroyed Jesus, he stopped Jesus. Uh, on that third day, uh, Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, on that third day, uh, we realized that what? Death could not hold him. The powers of hell could not hold him. Sin could not hold him down there. But Jesus rose up. Uh, and tonight, uh, he has the power to raise men and women from the dead. Uh, there's spiritual deadness. God has the power to change the lives of men and women. He has the power. And we can trust in him. We can realize, we can rest and know and assurance uh, that if, if we'll give our lives and, uh, and just uh, uh, confess our sins, uh, he said, well, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Uh, we can trust in the word of God. We can trust that God's going to keep his word. Trust knowing that Jesus is coming back. 
One of these days, he's coming back to take his church home. And I, I, I want to be ready. I, I want to make sure my heart is right. I, I want to make sure that I'm doing what God wants me to do. I, I want to make sure I am saved by the power of Almighty God. And you can have that assurance tonight in Jesus Christ. You can trust in Jesus. Our hope is in Jesus. It's not in the things of this world. It's not what the world can offer but it's in Jesus Christ. As the musicians come, who are you trusting in tonight? Are you trusting in the things of this world? Are you trusting in yourself? Or do you trust Jesus? Is Jesus the one that you cry out to in the midst of the storm? Is Jesus the one you cry out to and worship even in the storm? There is no, perhaps there is no storm at that very moment, but you worship God. Do you look to Jesus every single day? Or do you trust in yourself, rely upon your own works, upon your, what you think and, and what you try to do is right, and the world says it's right? Who are you trusted in tonight? With every head bowed and eyes closed, a reverence to the Lord.